What's up, motherfucking flowers? All right, so in the last freaking thing we did, the last tutorial or whatever we were talking about, stance. Jen, show them your stance. All right, good. Yeah, so her left foot's forward. Her right foot is slightly angled out this way. Elbows in, chin tucked, head down, fists glued to the cheeks. If you want more about the stance and why it's so important, check out the last video that we did. But we're going to be going over some basic strikes right now. The first strike that we're going to be looking at is a sneaky, dirty strike called the groin kick. Now, there's a number of ways to kick at the groin. You're not always going to be getting this one. It's not always going to be, the opening's not always going to be there. Generally speaking, though, you're going to be able to get them in the groin somehow, whether that's with a push kick or whether that's with a scoop kick. Now, we're going to be going over both, but we're going to start with the scoop kick. So, guys, when you're training this one, when you're the uki or the guy who's getting kicked, you're going to want to give them the opening. By giving them the opening, what I'm saying is you're going to open your legs slightly. That's going to make them automatically subconsciously recognize as soon as that happens, go ahead and execute this technique. Stance. All right, elbows in, chin tucked, head down. All right, now I'm gonna be giving you the opening, which is this. As soon as my legs separate, she's gonna take her shin and bring it in to my groin. Boom, just like that. Now notice she moves in afterwards. You can move in or you can move away, but I always recommend moving in and following on with other strikes. Especially since I'm smaller, right? If I was right. fighting somebody who was taller, or bigger, I don't want them to have the that, advantage. And we were talking about this yesterday and I explained to her, listen, you know, if you're fighting me and you kick me in the groin and then back away, I've got a hell of a reach. <laughs> yes, I've got but, weirdly long oh arms. I can strike her and I can get her with a jab or whatever it is. I can also move into her, which is generally nine times out of 10, if she's doing this to a dude, my reaction after getting hit in the groin like that is, oh, and I'm gonna fall into her. Mm -hmm. So why not just go ahead and take the advantage, press the advantage, go ahead, boom, then she crashes into me and she can follow on with other strikes. She can also step to the side, but we're gonna go over that in a second. Right now I just wanna work on the groin strike. Now, notice what she's doing from her stance. She can utilize a lead leg kick. So this leg could go ahead and just go up. Yeah, so notice how it's a little awkward for her at first because the stepping. Everyone's worried about foot placement and everything. Yeah. What about just lifting this up into my groin? Yeah, simple as that. Oh, okay. Ah, we caught her with her freaking uh, hands down. So, yeah, you don't even have to step. You can literally just lift your foot up. You're close enough. Yeah. If you're close enough that you know you're close enough, you're close enough. So, yeah. as soon as my legs open, Boom! Right up into the jewels. Yeah. So what we're doing here, guys, is uh, basically if you have ever punted like a soccer ball or a football, I think it's the same. You're going with that kind of arch in your foot, right? Mm -hmm. That dip right there in the foot. And that's what we're aiming for. We're also, if we can't get that, we can get deeper into the shin. Um, and that comes right up under and into the freaking nutsack. And believe me, it's not pleasant to get hit that way. So what we're gonna do is the lead leg first, just gonna lift it up, boom. And then she can go ahead and follow into me, push me back, whatever. Um, now the next one's gonna be the rear leg. So the rear leg, and notice the front leg steps just slightly and she comes in. That's a little more comfortable for pretty much everybody. Mm -hmm. Now a lot of the time it takes practice to work on that front leg. It's kind of a snappy, snazzy karate motion. Typically, you're gonna get more power and it's gonna be more intuitive to come up with the back leg and come in like that. But either way, all you have to do, guys, is practice. Now, a good way to practice this solo, get to a heavy bag, you know how it hangs, just go under it and practice with the lead leg, go a bunch of times, like hundreds of times, and then with the rear leg, and with the rear leg, practice getting a little bit of power. Not only is it gonna strengthen your shins, but it's also going to give you the muscle memory you need. Ah, right up and in. Now the next technique we're gonna be looking at for the groin kick is the push kick. Now whether you're doing Muay Thai or karate or whatever freaking art you're studying, 
Wing Chun Kung Fu, it doesn't matter. It's pretty much all the same. How does the front kick look? Yeah, and all she's doing is lifting up her knee and utilizing that force and pushing the sole of her foot right down into the groin. Now this, obviously, in Muay Thai, you're gonna be aiming for like this area, the pelvic area, not the groin itself, but up here, uh, kind of the bladder area, I guess, or you're going to be aiming for the stomach. If you're freaking flexible enough, you could aim for like the xiphoid area, sure, or even the face. But um, I, I kicked a guy in the nose once. Oh my God. When I was a lot younger and it yeah. fucked him up like yeah. instantly and he was out of the fight. <laughs> I don't think I have that flexibility anymore, guys. But maybe if he's like down on his knees, I could kick him in the freaking nose. <laughs> I'm dirty like that. Don't go down on your knees because I'll kick you in the nose. All right, so one more time that push kick is going to look like what? Boom. So a lot of the times, um, this isn't going to be applicable. You're just not going to be able to get that opening. But mm -hmm. most of the time, the push kick into the groin, you're gonna be able to get that. Even if I'm standing like close together, right. or if I'm standing here, or if I'm standing like this. So a lot of the times you'll see guys kind of blading off. And this is just instinctual. Uh, you'll see them blade all of their center line off and stand like this, right? Mm -hmm. You're not gonna get that up in the middle groin kick, but could you still get the push kick? Yeah, yeah absolutely you could, and it will get them. Now, will it have the same pain response effect as coming up and under. No, absolutely not. But will it still give them pause? Absolutely. And that's a great way to go into your next technique. So you give them that little push kick and then come in with a chin jab or a, a straight right or whatever it may be. Because they'll go, oh. It's, it's not even going to make them go, uh, but it's going to make them go, what the fuck? For a split second. And that's all you need. It's a distraction. So yeah, if you get them right in the groin, right in the balls, that is, uh, you know, and, and they're not expecting it, will it hurt them? Yeah, absolutely. But more than likely, generally, mm -hmm. it's going to just push them back a little bit, mm -hmm. give them pause for you to come with the next technique. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're looking for here uh, with the second strike. The push kick is more of a distraction mm -hmm. than anything else, because even if you don't actually get their balls that hard, uh, they're still going to be like, what the fuck, I got hit in the groin, and next thing they know, they're getting hit on the gin, and they're going to go down for a nap. So that's what we're doing with that. Now, the next technique we're going to look at is the most valuable technique in anyone's arsenal, the headbutt. Now, the headbutt, if you do it wrong, you could seriously hurt yourself. <laughs> But if you do it right, you could seriously hurt your opponent and be fine for yourself. Now, in England, in the UK, this is something they love to do. It's just a very British thing to do is, oh, mate, da, 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 boom. And the next thing you know, you got headbutt in the bridge of the nose and your fucking eyes are welling up and you don't know what's going on. And then the next thing you know, you're getting hit in the chin a bunch of times and you're down on the ground. And then the next thing you know, you're getting kicked by the bunch of boots and that's not fun. So. Always be aware, especially when someone's looking like this, that they're about to fucking headbutt you or something's gonna go on. Now, headbutt, what we're gonna be doing is utilizing this part of the head. Right up here. Not here, okay? Not here. Not here, right? Always up here. Up here, the bones are all fused together. All of the plates of the skull, it's the strongest area of the head. Mm. That's why we say chin tucked, oh, right, right. right? Because if I hit her here on the head, mm. it's actually gonna do a little bit more damage to my fist mm. than it is to her head. Not to mention the concussive effect is always worse on the brain from the side than straight on. If you just simply put your head down and pull into somebody, you're gonna, you're gonna really start to like throw them off their game. It really is, unless they know how to fight, it really is something that's kind of like, whoa, what's going on? Mm -hmm. So we always hit with right up here, not, not here, not on the top of the head, that's sensitive, right here on the top of the forehead. Mm -hmm. And what are we aiming for? Always a soft spot, eye socket, right? No. Nose, bridge of the nose. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> yes, you can actually get them in the chin with this. You can make it work. Mm -hmm. uh, sternum, okay? So those are areas, clavicles even. I will be careful with the clavicles with the headbutt because mm -hmm. if you catch their chin uh, right up here with your forehead, it can kind of hurt you, right? Mm -hmm. 
and it can actually end up hurting you more than them. Mm. But when we're going with the headbutt, now the headbutt's perfect for someone short like Jen. Yeah, it I really gotta, is. I gotta be like a bull. Yeah, like, not only can you get me in my nose, just mm -hmm. slowly do it. Okay, boom, she gets me in my nose. Mm -hmm. What else can you do on the chin? Boom, into the chin. That can really start to mess me up. Also, into the sternum. Go ahead, boom. Yeah, and if she gets me in the sternum, the xiphoid process or the sternum, uh, that really hurts, guys. It really, really hurts. Mm -hmm. The same as, you know, in the military, they used to tell you to punch them straight in the uh, sternum. Well, that was before all of these freaking um, plate carriers and vests came about. Now you would really injure yourself striking someone in the freaking plate carrier. But we're not so worried about that, guys. Hopefully, we're not striking anyone with plate carriers. You never know these days. Uh, so we're going to be going and headbutting into the bridge of the nose. We're going to do this slowly. softly and slowly so you don't knock me out on camera. That would be embarrassing. <laughs> My face would be very red after that, after I woke up. But I'd still show you guys. Anyway, so what we're going to be doing is I want you to do the headbutt. And I just want you to practice like two or three times. Okay. Boom. So you don't need to put your hands Man, no on hands. me at all. Okay. Just, so just no hands. Yeah, forward. exactly. Now, with someone like me, uh -huh. headbutt. Okay, know, notice that you want to wait until my head. head's either dip yeah. or I push up, or you distract me by uh -huh. striking me uh -huh. in the groin, striking me in the in the um, or I could in the why am I forgetting this sternum. word? Sternum, yes, or yeah, you could slap me in the ear, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you Disorient know, you. and when my head turns, uh -huh. what am I exposing here? Temple, my temple, so you could wear. Headbutt where? Oh, the Into the temple, exactly. That's a really good area to headbutt, guys. Mm -hmm. Anywhere soft. Mm -hmm. um, anywhere eyes. Oh, eye socket. Nose. Uh -huh. Temples. Mm -hmm. Chin. Clavicles even. And what? Sternum. Sternum. I do like the side better because I get nervous that my your teeth uh -huh. like will get into me and you'll bite me instead like as like yeah. I attack, like a seat. It like, could like, happen and you yeah. could get caught up. Yeah. Absolutely. So what you'd want to do is just be quick about it okay. and pull back. Right. Boom. Yeah. So once more. Boom. It's pretty simple, guys. It's not like the whole big thing. What you can do to train this and practice this, mm -hmm. heavy bag. Mm -hmm. Just headbutt the heavy bag. Headbutt the heavy bag. Headbutt the heavy bag. Uh, after a while, you could move on to headbutting other things. Uh, I've been known to be found in my apartment at like two o'clock in the morning, headbutting my refrigerator. Uh, yes, it does strengthen your head. Do I recommend doing that a lot? No, but <laughs> while you're training and making yourself a better fighter, you can be a little crazy sometimes and you know, softly, don't knock yourself out because that again would be very embarrassing. And then someone like me would show up and have to take you to the hospital. Uh, I'm in, I'm a firefighter in my off time and that's what I do is I fucking find idiots like that and I take them to the hospital. So what you really want to do is go soft and train hard and train easy though and just headbutt things, headbutt things. And you'll find that when you literally have to headbutt a human body, it's going to be nothing. You're going to be able to do it like that. So those are three simple techniques. What we're going to be doing in the next mother flowering episode or whatever you want to call it tutorial is going over three more very basic strikes and we'll go kind of in depth but before we close out two things first thing i want to recap mm -hmm. okay so we did the scooping groin kick mm -hmm. my legs open she scoops up ow what happens after i do that i move forward and she comes into me and pushes me okay good good so the second technique is what oh the the push kick. Oh, and then she can hit me in the jaw or grab my head, pull it down into a knee. Oh. Or uh, she can headbutt me. So this is more of a close combat, close contact type of thing. Maybe I've got her here and I'm pulling her head down like a tough wannabe guy, right? Well, she immediately deploys blah, the headbutt and evens the playing field, evens the odds. All right, guys. Don't forget to check out GutterFightingSecret.com. I've got the original Gutter Fighting Cabadas DVD there. It's not available for direct download, but if you're looking for that type of thing, we've got 
Travel safety 2.0 for direct download. Warrior weight loss. I lost over 130 pounds and you see the man before you very sleek, very slim. Uh, I will tell you how I did that and how you can lose as much weight very quickly as you want as well. I've also got simple seduction on there, direct download. And I've also got uh, what counter manipulation secrets, all the cool guy stuff from like intelligence work that will let you manipulate the fuck out of people. And more importantly, avoid being manipulated by anybody else. So if that, if any of that shit sounds cool to you guys, go ahead and check out gutterfightingsecrets.com and I'll see you on the next mother flowering episode of Street Fighting 101. All right, guys, cheers. Oh, hey, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense and... Don't be scared, be prepared. You heard her.